recording now. Good morning everyone and welcome to our parish service of Reflection and Holy Communion. Today we are continuing our reflection from Growing Older and Wiser and Roger Stora will be sharing the reflection with us after which uh, Reverend Simon will be uh, leading us through uh, the Holy Communion liturgy. So let's just pray as we begin our service. Father God, we thank you for the technology that allows us to meet together. We thank you for your presence with each one of us in our homes. Thank you for your presence in our hearts, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you will be with us now as we share in this service and as we focus on your word and as we pray together and remember all that Jesus did for us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you thank so you much so for the privilege of reflecting on the fifth passage of scripture in this series, considering what we can learn about growing older and wiser. And this afternoon, we've been asked to consider the mean, meaning of wisdom, a particular man who at the time of our passage was old and well advanced in years. Does getting older automatically mean that we get wiser? Certainly as we get older we gain experience with more and more events in our lives and we can learn from our mistakes. I can remember when I was driving home from Oxford and coming off the M25 slip road towards Watford at dusk and suddenly seeing a small deer coming out of the undergrowth running straight towards my headlights. I now drive in the outside lane of that particular section of road and have recommended others to do the same. However, that sort of decision seems straightforward and does not seem to me necessarily to require God's wisdom. However, there are decisions in which we do need spiritual wisdom. And this is the case in our passage this afternoon, which Betty has kindly agreed to read for us. It comes from Genesis chapter 14 and verses yeah. 1 to 9. And the reading, 24. The reading, sorry? 24, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 24, 1 to 9. 24 is right. The reading okay. is from Abraham, the first of the major patri patriarchs. Thank you, Betty. A wife for Isaac. Abraham was now very old, and the Lord blessed him in everything he did. He said to his oldest servant, who was in charge of all that he had, place your hand between my thighs and make a vow. I want you to make a vow in the name of the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not choose that you that you will not choose a wife for my son from the people here in Canaan. You must go back to the country where I was born and get a wife for my son Isaac from among my relatives. But the servant asked, what if the girl will not leave home to come with me to this land? Shall I send your son back to the land you came from? Abraham answered, take care that he, you don't send my son back. The Lord, of, the God of heaven, brought me from the home of my fathers and from the land of my relatives. And he solemnly promised me that he would give me this land to my descendants. He will send his angel before you, so that you can get a wife there for my son. If the girl is not willing to come with you, you will be free from this promise. But you must not, under any circumstance, take my son back there. So the servant put his hand where Abraham directed him, and made a vow to do what Abraham had asked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you, Betty, very much. So we have here the account of Abraham arranging for a bride for his son Isaac. And Abraham is leaving the matter completely to God through Abraham's own servant 
and God's angel. This is Abraham completely trusting God in the matter, having total faith in God. God had told Abraham at the beginning of chapter 12, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And although Abraham did not know it, Abraham was very special. He was to be the forebear of the Lord Jesus. The first verse of St. Matthew's Gospel says, a record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Over perhaps some 2,000 years later, Jesus was to be born to be the saviour of the world. God had further said to Abraham in chapter 15, verse 5, Look up to the heavens and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, so shall your offspring be. And Abraham believed the Lord. Sarah, his wife, had died and Isaac was her only son, and possibly about 37 or so. And Abraham may have been concerned that he might die before Isaac could marry whoever God had chosen for him. So he was sending a trusted servant some 500 miles to Haran to bring back a bride for Isaac, chosen by God. He may well also have been concerned that Isaac should not marry someone who worshipped one of the many gods worshipped by the Canaanites. However, although God was going to make clear who would be his choice of bride, it seems that Abraham did not want there to be any pressure felt by his servant, the prospective bride, or her family. It is also of note that Abraham was concerned that Isaac should not go to the prospective bride's family home, perhaps because Isaac might stay there and God had told Abraham that, to your offspring I will give this land, meaning the land where Abraham was currently encamped. Abraham's trust in God had been developing over the years. In the past, on two occasions in Egypt and with Abimelech, Abraham had felt that he'd had to pass off Sarah, his wife, as his sister in order to save his own life. However, since that, he had come through a very serious test when he had shown that he was prepared to obey God completely. He had been told to take Isaac to be a human sacrifice on a hill which some scholars think may have been Golgotha. An angel called out to Abraham and stopped him at the last minute. Because of this, God declared, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the star stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. We have heard the first nine verses of chapter 24 in our reading, and the remainder of that chapter gives a detailed account of the total success of Abraham's servant's mission to find Rebecca, who at the end of the chapter became Isaac's wife. It is worth noting Abraham's servant's prayer when he reached the Nahor well from which Rebecca was about to draw water, and the later discussion in chapter 24. God seems to be very much at work in the hearts of Abraham's servant and Rebekah. It is also worth noting that Rebekah's father and brother, unusually for the time, also worshipped God, 
rather than the many gods who were generally worshipped by people at the time. And they said, this is from the Lord. Here is Rebecca, take her and go and let her become the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. Well, we may say, the rest is history. Isaac and Rebecca's son Jacob, who was renamed by God as Israel, there have been many millions of descendants. The remainder of the Old Testament records their story. And included in the Old Testament, there are many dozens of prophecies of the Messiah which were fulfilled by Jesus, perhaps 2,000 years later. All this happened because of Abraham's faith in God when he was, if you recall, old and well advanced in years. The Lord said, Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. God took so much care with Abraham. Jesus has now come and can be with us, each of us, individually, by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that we can have the privilege of prayer at any time and for as much time as we need. Paul wrote to the church in Colossae, We have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. Prayer can be very powerful and is a great privilege. It can sometimes be very helpful to pray briefly in urgent situations, so-called arrow prayers. And perhaps each of us should also consider our own prayer life. Think again about Paul praying for the church in Colossae almost 2,000 years ago. We have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And just consider how Abraham was praying for his servant's success some 4,000 years ago as his servant was traveling those 500 miles to bring back the bride of God's choice for Isaac. May we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love for each one of us. Help us, we pray, to want to know you better through the power of the Holy Spirit and to seek his will for us in all that we do. We ask this in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. You may wish to consider, which is this. The question is, when faced with a challenging situation or decision in your family or another area, have I prayed? Well, let us take that question and make something of it. And as we have been challenged to pray, as we have been shown a red thread of prayer through the Bible, let us now Take the opportunity to pray to God who called us together today, to God who is with each of us and is for all of us. And let me invite you to join with me in prayer as first I invite you to pray 
prayers of thanksgiving, highlighting the attitude of gratitude God has laid in our hearts through his Holy Spirit. The attitude of gratitude which keeps our eyes on him and our feet from stumbling. Brothers and sisters, let me invite you to pray prayers thanking God for what he has given you, for what he has given us. God Almighty, Lord of this world, we thank you for life. We thank you for the blessing that we have woken this day. That we did not die in our sleep. We thank you that we are here together in safety, worshipping you. We thank you for the blood coursing through our veins, for the air which fills our lungs. We thank you for you have given us so much. Amen. If you wish to pray, please take your video off uh, and then bring your own prayer of thanksgiving to God. So we move to our time of confession. And I invite you to join with me, praying. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought, in word, in deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So having had some time to thank God for what he has given us, let us now also remember that he is a generous God, that he knows us better than we know ourselves, that he answers the prayers we pray in his name. So we begin our prayers by bringing before him the needs of this beautiful but broken world. God Almighty, Lord of this world, we bring before you now all those places where your word is not allowed to be spoken. Those countries where meeting even like this to praise and worship you is forbidden and where people are punished for what we take for granted we pray for the people in the persecuted church the people who are the persecuted church and we remember specifically today those in northern nigeria who are being persecuted by fulani tribesmen by Boko Haram. We remember those in South Asia, in India, following the new rising up of violence against Christians, in Pakistan, in Iran, and in all places where your people 
are being persecuted. We ask that you look with favour upon your people, that you protect them, that you give them hope, and that you restore in them the confidence that in you all things do work to the good for those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We bring before you now the, work, the needs of your church. And we thank you once more for all the wonderful gifts and blessings you have bestowed upon us as your people in this place, as your church for Edgware. We thank you for the distinctive mission you have called each of our churches to carry out. And we bless that mission and we proclaim your favour over those who carry it out. Each of us here today and all who call upon your name. We thank you for the unity demonstrated through Edgware and District Churches and pray for our brothers and sisters in all the other churches which worship you and call upon your name. We thank you also for the resources you have blessed us with and we pray that you give us the wisdom to use those resources to bring you glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we bring before you the needs of those known to us who are suffering in mind, in body or in spirit and trusting that you are the same God who healed when he walked the earth, that you are the same yesterday, today and tomorrow, that you will reach out, touch, meet people at their point of need and heal them. And so with full confidence, we name those people we know who are suffering before you now, the quietness of our hearts, or out loud. And continue. So, okay. Richard, Janice, and to Rebecca, and the rest of Mona's families. As we prepare to close our prayers, we remember particularly the family of Mona Pick, those who knew her, those who loved her, those who will be at the funeral on Friday. And we ask you to give them and us all your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And so having brought before God the needs of the world, the church and ourselves, we now dare to come before God and to thank him for hearing our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, having prayed, we now come before God to receive as we follow the order of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Please adopt a, an attitude of prayer as we continue. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, 
Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So we praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you. Gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour upon your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, who is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Remain in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I wish you a wonderful Wednesday and I pray that in the rest of the day you may know more of him who called you to be here today, to share with brothers and sisters. Goodbye, and God bless you.